Hello everyone and welcome to VizIQ Virtual Classroom tutorial. In this video, we will learn how we can use and utilize the features of Virtual Classroom to deliver more effective online classes. As you can see, this is an online Virtual Classroom which uh, allows you to communicate with your students using audio and video devices. As you can see, if you are streaming your video devices, you will be able to see your video you know, streaming here. And underneath the video, you will have the chat box to communicate with your students on the initial stages. When students enter the session, they will not have any audio or video devices uh, or controls. So you can communicate with them uh, through the chat box. And later on, if you wish, you can also give them the audio video controls and they will be able to communicate with uh, you using audio and video devices. Now, if you wish to communicate with uh, any of your students uh, through a private messages, you can uh, click on the private message tab and uh, click on create a private room and select the student who you would like to have a, a private chat with. So it's entirely up to you, whichever student you will pick, you will be able to send a private message to that student. And whenever you want, you can come back and join the class conversation by clicking on the class conversation tab here. So on top of the virtual classroom, we have this record button that uh, is blinking right now. That means the recording is in progress. And if you wish to pause or resume this, you can click on this uh, tab any particular area of the virtual classroom that you do not wish to record you just pause it and resume it whenever you're ready right next to that you have your uh, device controls so you can actually mute and unmute your microphone anytime you want if you wish you can uh, start and stop your video camera anytime you want so it's entirely up to you next to that we have timer that gives you the timing information of the session what uh, uh, is the total duration of the class when it is started uh, you know how much time is elapsed if you wish you can extend the class from within this window and if you wish you can end the class before time as well now next to that we have uh, poll feature now poll feature gives you the feasibility to ask your students a random question all you need to do is click on the polling tab that will give you the option to create a poll when you click on the new poll tab that will give you the option to create the question so you can go ahead and you can start typing and uh, you know create a question that you wish to ask your students provide multiple options by default there are two options given but if you wish you can uh, you know definitely have uh, more options added to it so once it is done you can go ahead and you can you know create these options and click on the save button now when you save it it will be saved for you to use it later on in the session but if you wish to publish it instantly just click on the publish button and that will publish this question to your students and they can respond according to their best knowledge at any time if you would like to end it just simply click on the X button and that will end the poll for you now moving on to the next thing that we have here is the layout change option first thing about the layout is that we have different layouts for the virtual classroom now if you go and click on the layout change button once it will take you to a full screen presentation mode where your presentation will cover the entire area so that gives you a little more space uh, to work on your presentation and explain uh, it more effectively it will hide out all the chat box and, and video windows and everything else now but yes if you wish to bring it up anytime you can go ahead and you can click on these tabs and you can bring your attendees list and your chat box by simply clicking on them now we have different layouts when I said uh, different layouts you can click on this tab again and that will take you to an audio video conferencing mode where if you have given audio video controls to your uh, students you will be able to see them on the full screen so you will be able to see them and they will be able to see you and at any time if you would like to you know switch the screens all you need to do is just click on the screen that you want to be on the main screen and the other one on the smaller screens underneath now apart from that if you click on this layout button again let's suppose if you have multiple uh, you know students participating and if you want everybody to be uh, on the screen in the same size if you click on the layout change button again it will rearrange everything in a tile view so you will be able to have uh, somewhere around six video feeds fitted in the same window apart from that if you click on the layout change button again it will restore it to the default layout now once you do that next to the layout change button we have screen share option that actually allows you to share your screen with your students and once the screen is shared you can go ahead and you can minimize your virtual classroom and go to whichever screen software or any third-party website so wherever you will go your students your participants will be able to see it and in order to share the screen all you need to do is click on the screen share button that will give you the option whether you want to share the entire screen or if there are other applications open like Skype or another uh, browser so if that is the case you select the application and only that particular application will be shared 
if you choose entire screen the entire screen will be shared and all you need to do after that is after selecting click on the share button so once the screen is shared you will have the screen share button turned into red flash button so at any time you wish to stop it all you need to do is click on the stop screen share button and it will stop the screen share now next to that we have a people's tab that is your attendees list so if you wish uh, to see the number of participants the icon itself that will give you the total number of uh, participants in the class but if you would like to see who they are just click on the people's tab and that will give you the list of people who are participating in the session and you can give them audio video and writing controls by clicking on these icons in front of them if you want to enable these whiteboard tools uh, to your students just give them uh, just click on the pencil icon in front of their name and they will be able to utilize all the tools on their end so this is how you can uh, see your attendees and manage your attendees in the virtual classroom next to that we have uh, notification tab now on the student side there will be a a raise hand option which will be located right next to the timer tab students can click on that and send a quick small question to the teachers uh, during the sessions so if that is the case the teacher will see and receive the notifications here and when they click on uh, this bell icon that will give them the list of all the raise hands and all the questions that they have sent alongside with the raise hand all you need to do is just select the name of the student and that will show you the question of that particular uh, student now next thing that we're going to talk about is the content uploading now in order to upload uh, content in the virtual classroom it is very simple procedure now firstly you have different types of content that you can use first is YouTube now when we uh, want to use a media file directly that you wish to play from YouTube all you need to do is click on the YouTube button paste the URL of that YouTube video and click on the tick button and that's all you need to do copy paste and play and your YouTube video will start streaming now moving on to the next thing if you wish you can also utilize the whiteboard tool so uh, if you click on the whiteboard that will open a new whiteboard and you can add any number of whiteboards and you can add you know play any number of YouTube videos and everything basic you know uh, tools that are available with the whiteboard is like your color, common color grid you can choose the color that you wish to use pen has different strokes pen brush and highlighter which is thicker than the other respectively we have multiple shapes starting from basic you know square circles triangles and going into smileys and block arrows and grids and plenty of other shapes that are there you can go ahead and you can utilize them and and explore them now next to that is the transform button transform button basically is your selection tool any object that you will be uh, creating on the whiteboard you can go ahead and you can use the transform button and you can select it and then you can uh, rotate it and uh, you know manage the way you want it so however you want you can actually go and you can do that next to that we have uh, drag tool the hand button is your drag tool you can actually move your content up and down so if that is the case if this is what you want you can definitely go and you can work with it now next to that is your eraser tool you can go ahead and click on the eraser tab and then you can either go and uh, erase whatever you want that you have created on the whiteboard or if you want to delete uh, the object permanently all you need to do is press shift and hold and then click on the object and that object will be gone from the whiteboard Moving on to, to the next tool that we have is the TT stands for text. If you wish, you can use your keyboard uh, to you know communicate with your students on the whiteboard, annotate on top of your uh, presentation, or whatever you will do, you can uh, go ahead and you can write and type on the virtual classroom here. Now, next to that is the camera icon. Uh, that that is uh, for you to upload your images. All you need to do is click on the camera icon, and that will give you the option to browse through your hard drive. Just simply select the image that you wish to upload and click on open button that will process the image and that will be added in the virtual classroom now underneath that you have undo's and redo's any action that you have taken on the whiteboard you can undo it and redo it anytime moving on to the next thing is the media player now media player only plays the content that you have uploaded in your content library so all the media files that you have uploaded be it be audio or video files they will be listed in the media player right here and all you need to do to play these videos is just simply select the file now when you select the file it will quickly buffer it and once the buffering is done it will start streaming your uh, content right here so as you can see this content has started playing now next thing that we have here is content now content gives you the feasibility to upload your content directly from desktop as well as to access your content that has already been uploaded in your content library prior to the session so in order to access your files directly from uh, 
desktop all you need to do is click on the choose a file button select the file that you wish to upload and then click on the open button and that will add your content into the virtual classroom now apart from that if you have already uploaded your content in the content library all the content that you have uploaded will be listed here and you can select the content and that will give you a quick preview of that content just to make sure that this is the same content this is the same document that you wish to share click on the share button right next to the preview and when you click on that this presentation will be added into the virtual classroom last but not the least thing that we have is the code editor now in case if you're into programming if you have uh, you know if you want to teach coding how to code this code editor will be a very useful tool for you now in order to do that you can simply start uh, writing the codes you know from the very beginning or if you have uh, worked on a on a code uh, you know previously you can also open them and it's the same procedure you click on the open button will give you the option to browse through your hard drive you can upload the file you know uh, you can upload the .js files and likewise if you have started working on it you know you have opened the code and then you have made changes to it in that case you can also uh, you know save uh, the changes that you have made so simply click on the save tab and that will save the changes now you always have uh, different languages that you can choose from that is JavaScript HTML and CSS for now and you also have undo's and redo's in this option different uh, color schemes are there themes that you can choose from and then definitely the text size if you wish to increase the size of the text that you're uh, coding in so you can go ahead and you can increase the size of the text now moving on to the last thing that we have is the option for you to save your progress all you need to do is click on the save to PDF tab in order to save the work that you have done on your documents that you have utilized in the virtual classroom like if you have uploaded a PowerPoint presentation and if you have annotated and marked out things and highlighted things so if you want to save the entire work that you have done you can click on the save to PDF tab now when you click on the save to PDF tab it will give you the list of all the documents as well as the whiteboards it will not give you the option uh, to save your YouTube or uh, your media player or your code editor but yes any document that can be PowerPoint presentations PDF files Word documents as well as your uh, whiteboard so as you can see it gives you the option to just save everything now if you want everything to be clubbed together and saved as one PDF file you can just confirm it as it is but if you want to save every document individually all you need to do is select the document and then click on the confirm button so that particular document will be downloaded and will be saved as a PDF file with all the work that you have done on that during the session so these are the tools and the features that we have in our VisIQ's virtual classroom that you can use and utilize to deliver more effective online sessions so if you have any further questions any further queries please do not hesitate to send us an email at support at visiq.com we are a 24 by 7 support team and we'll be more than happy to assist you in any way possible thank you very much and you have a wonderful day bye for now hello guys welcome to the virtual classroom I'm going to explain you all the features about VisIQ virtual classroom that as a teacher what all controls would be available to you and how you can manage the first online VisIQ class the very first thing I'm going to explain you about is the VisIQ whiteboard controls on the left panel there are whiteboard controls that you can use I can easily relate it with Microsoft Paint as you have Microsoft Paint available on your computer you have a pointer tool freehand pencil text box different shapes graph eraser special shapes that you want to get on the whiteboard if you want to delete any shape from the whiteboard emoticals are available and you can also manage the font size and the color that is about the whiteboard you can open as many multiple whiteboards you want to open in the virtual classroom by just clicking on the plus sign like this and you can also cancel a whiteboard by clicking on the red X it will give you the prompt click on yes to close it on the top panel there are controls available through which you can share a presentation play the media files starting off with the content library feature as you can upload contents on your VisIQ account you can easily access these contents in your live classroom too by just clicking on the yellow folder it will show you all the contents you have uploaded so far on your VisIQ account you just need to click on add to class and that content would be added in your classroom 
and it will open a new whiteboard and you would have that presentation loaded in the class. Next option is upload from desktop. If you want to upload any file from your computer to the classroom directly, click on that and choose the file. Click on open. It would start uploading that file manually in the classroom and it would take some time to upload the file because it is getting directly uploaded in the class. So once it's uploaded, it will show you the progress as it's uploading. Once it's uploaded, you will have a new whiteboard open with the content. After that, you have a media player icon. With the help of media player, you can play audio and video files in the classroom. You can maximize it and it would fit in the whiteboard. On the bottom right corner, it will show you the audios and videos you have already uploaded in your content library. You can select from the drop down if you want to play an mp3 or an mp4 file. You just click on the play sign and it will play that file here on the whiteboard. You can play and pause it anytime during the class from this button here and you can also put it on mute or control the volume. Next is about the video link that will support the YouTube videos. You just copy the link from youtube.com, paste it here into the video link bar and click on play. It would play the YouTube file and the format supported is only YouTube. Next is the screen sharing feature. With the help of screen sharing, you can share your computer screen with students in the classroom. Just click on screen and then click on start screen share. It would immediately start sharing the screen with the students in the classroom. Your students would be able to see your computer desktop or whatever file or application you want to share. But with screen sharing, they would not get in control to your computer screen. They can only see your computer screen and cannot access it. And once you're done sharing, click on stop sharing your screen. Next is the poll feature. With the help of poll feature, you can ask questions to the students in the classroom. You click on create new poll, enter the question, enter the options. You can either click on save poll or click on save and publish. If you click on save poll, the question would be saved on the database or if you click on save and publish, it would be saved as well as it would be published to the student's end and they would be able to answer the question. If you click on back to the poll list, if it will list you all the questions that you have already created in the poll so far in your previous classes. So you just click on publish poll and students will receive the question at their screens. Once they start submitting the answers, you will receive result at your screen. It will show you the poll results. You would have three options to see the result in the classroom. One is in the bar chart, second is in the pie chart and third would be the list view. It will show the attendees name and the options that they have selected to complete the question. That is how the poll feature can be used in the class and you can click on the X to close the poll feature. Last feature is about the breakout room. With the help of breakout room you can divide your complete student strength in different groups. You click on breakout room and then click on edit room. You have to create list of rooms in the classroom by clicking on create new room and in one breakout session you can create maximum five rooms. On the left hand side it will show you the student's name. So you just have to move the students from the main room to the different breakout room. The main purpose of the breakout room is you can divide the complete student strength first of all in different groups. You can give them a particular point for a group discussion or for a teamwork. That can be one. Secondly, if you want your students, if you want a, a one on one session with one student in the classroom, you can create a room Pick a student from the and you can conduct question and uh, answer round. So it completely depends upon you whether you want to divide the complete class into different groups or you want to conduct one on one session. And once you've done that, you can click on end breakout session and students would be shifted back to the main room. Moving towards right, first of all it will show you the name on the top 
corner that by what name you are in the classroom next to the name there are green bars it will show you the internet connectivity that you're getting in the classroom up bandwidth down bandwidth and the latency and all these ratios would be fluctuating depend upon your internet connection the pencil stands for the writing control the microphone stands for the audio control you can anytime put the microphone on mute or unmute it and the camera would broadcast your video in the class if you don't want to share your video just click on the camera sign and it would stop broadcasting the video the wrench icon is for the device settings click on the device settings wrench icon it takes you to the device settings from where you can check the microphone video and speaker quality and if you make any changes here do not forget to click on save settings under live video stream it will show you the video getting broadcasted either your or from your students end under students list it will show you the total number of students who have joined your class and in the chat feature you can see the total messages which are sent by students even a teacher would have an access to the chat feature you can read the text and you can also reply to the chat on the bottom right corner you will see the VizIQ logo next to VizIQ logo there is a clock you click on the clock you would be able to extend the session time selected from the drop down that how many minutes you want to extend the class by also you would get an alert you can set an alert time that before the class gets over you want to get an alert for 5 minutes before 10 minutes or 15 minutes it would give you the alert that your class is getting over in next few minutes and you can extend the session as required click on OK to close this box next is it will show you the total time remaining of the class next to that it will show you the recording feature as all the classes gets recorded on VizIQ you have an option to manage the recording during a live class and only teacher would be able to manage the live classroom if you want to pause you just click on the pause button and it will pause the recording and if you want to resume like for example you have given 10 minutes break to the students in the classroom once all students are back you click on resume the students will be back in the class and the recording of the class will start again